Today, I will be talking about one of the ways that we in inadvertently sabotage ourselves when it comes to relationships. For years, I would have people show up in my classes in the midst of a breakup or divorce, struggling with patterns of abandonment, rejection, unrequited love that were being strung along. And the fact that most people have never learned how to work effectively with their emotions. They don't understand their own emotions. In addition, there's also a biochemical process involved. And so what happens with so many people is they get into this pattern of rumination, or they obsess about that person they have formed an attachment to, and they're experiencing all this pain. But what happens is they end up thinking obsessively about that individual, everything that they said or did, replaying every interaction they had. And it could become a very destructive pattern that can make it extraordinarily difficult to heal, to let go, and to move on. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm Ben Ufana, so we'll be diving into it. I've included a lot in this article and as I have in others. And so I will be referring to my article. I'd be reading a few sections because I just want to include everything that I feel is really important. It's just too much to remember. Be sure to look below and click like and subscribe. Also, there is a more detailed article accompanying this video. So I encourage you to look below the video if you're watching it on YouTube and click on the link to the article, actually read it, because you'll gain a more thorough understanding as you do so. Starting out here, I put together sort of a, I guess you'd say, composite of some of the more challenging individuals I've worked with over the years. So we'll call this person Jason. So Jason shows up in one of my classes with his then girlfriend, and a lot of time has elapsed since then, so a lot of the specifics I have since forgotten. Anyway, he was very much strung out over her. His uh, things that she would say or do were, was really triggering him pretty, pretty badly emotionally. And one of the things that he vented his anguish, frustration over was the fact that she lied incessantly. And he found out after he was with her for some time that she was actually married. But Jason scheduled sessions for me to work with both him and his then girlfriend with the expectation that I would somehow magically but transform her and fix the relationship. And of course, when that didn't happen, he was somewhat frustrated with me. I think a lot of people seek out an individual such as myself with unrealistic expectations. So Jason disappeared. And then a few years later, he resurfaces with another woman that he's totally strung out on. And this one was a whole different flavor of crazy ass dysfunction. One of the more difficult or challenging things about working with Jason is that you would talk incessantly about everything that was not working, giving me all the infinite play by play details of what was making him so crazy. Apparently he wasn't dealing all that well with his own emotions. His then girlfriend, I was telling me that he was drinking quite heavily and she was awakened one night with him straddling her and literally choking her. Obviously, that's horrible, but it's comparable to the dysfunction playing out in so many people's relationships and, and their lives as a whole. But what I found over the years of working with people is that as I get them deeper into their bodies and processing the emotions, healing those wounded parts of themselves. They're able to clean up their lives, to let go of the unhealthy attachments that are causing them such enormous suffering. And I've had many individuals that I've worked with go on to attract healthier companions with whom they could establish a more loving and meaningful and deeply fulfilling connection. Now, having spent 
years training with a traditional Native American doctor and actual medicine man from the Kiowa tribe, I work as a conduit. I allow this extraordinarily powerful presence to work through me. And it facilitates healing within the body and mind. And when people's bodies are holding so much stress and anger and upset, <clears throat> other distressing emotions, I guide them through a series of practices. And these practices enable them to digest the stresses, all this emotional backlog, so that their bodies and minds become more receptive to healing. What I found so difficult about working with Jason is I couldn't get him to do the practices necessary to facilitate the deep level processing of his emotional responses to all that painful and heartrending drama that was being enacted in his relationship. Jason was not only resistant, he could be combative at times. And even worse, he continued to talk obsessively, giving me all the play-to-play -play details of everything that wasn't working in his failed attempt at a love life. I'd already told Jason how incredibly damaging that is to continually drone on and on about everything that was causing him so much howl and heartache. It's not only difficult to listen to, but after some time, you feel as though you've given a quart of blood. Understandably, I cut him off because it served no useful purpose and I just don't want to hear it. At one point when Jason called, it was obvious that he'd been drinking heavily. And on one hand, I do feel tremendous concern. I care deeply for each individual I work with. I do everything I can on my end to facilitate the much needed healing. I also convey to people that healing is a team effort. As I'm working with an individual, they also need to be doing their part. I could definitely relate to Jason's struggles because in my 20s, I struggled with the same kind of pattern. I remember a birthday party I attended at that time, and I started talking about whoever I'd formed an attachment to and what wasn't working and how it was making me so crazy. And the friend I was talking with gave me this look of both anger and disgust, and she turned around and walked away from me. And yes, that hurt at the time. But in hindsight, I realized that she did me a tremendous favor. What I didn't understand back then was the fact that by continually ruminating, thinking obsessively and talking about what wasn't working in my love life and all the sort of details is that I was perpetuating my own suffering. It took me some time, but I gradually learned how to interrupt those obsessive thoughts, the destructive internal dialogue that I would get trapped in. Whenever I'd catch myself caught up in that, those narratives, I'd say, okay, what are the deepest feelings behind all that? And from there, I would bring my full awareness to whatever I was feeling, whether it was sadness or fear or grief or feeling anxious or fearful of loss or strung out. I would just bring my full awareness to what I was feeling and I would breathe softly and deeply from the depths of those feelings and sensations. And that was the beginning of my breaking that pattern of romantic obsession. So many of us suffered abuses as children, repeated heartbreaks and other traumas and the emotional wounding that we carry runs extraordinarily deep. And while some of us may rapidly get over a breakup and let go of unhealthy attachments, for others, it's like a drug addiction. Except in this case, it's an addiction to a person and the relationship you have with them or, or that you want to have with them. What so many people fail to understand is that if you're not able to access those underlying feelings that are driving that obsession and do the deep level processing of what you're feeling emotionally, keeps you stuck or fixated on that person, fueling the obsession that prevents you from healing and letting go and moving on. For those of us who have spent our lives numbing ourselves to our emotions, it could be extraordinarily difficult to actually get in touch with what we're feeling. We may experience it at a superficial level and it drives the crazy, the acting out that we're doing, the obsession. But again, it's a more superficial level of feeling. And I had to make an extraordinary effort to stay present with what I could feel and keep breathing with it. And as I did so, like I remember one night after someone had ghosted me, when 
my what, late 20s. And as I stayed with that, at some point, it felt like the bottom dropped out from under me and I dropped into this horrid pit of excruciatingly uncomfortable feelings. And yet there are many other people who are overwhelmed by their emotions. It feels horrendous, but to the best of our ability, we need to be able to access these feelings because if you can't feel it, you can't heal it. We need to bring our full awareness to be fully present with what we're feeling so that these deep emotional wounds can heal. The process could be that much more painful for those of us who have self-medicated with alcohol and other recreational drugs and even pharmaceuticals like antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds can further complicate the process of healing. As I said before, the painful losses that so many of us go through at times can be excruciatingly painful and not knowing how to cope with the heartache or other overwhelming emotional responses, many of us fall into this trap of thinking and talking obsessively about what's not working, <clears throat> talking it to death with anyone that we could find or get to listen to us. In these instances, it's like we're desperately attempting to make sense of and to exercise control over the other person and the crazy making relational drama unfolding, all in an effort to stop the hurt. Yet in doing so, we're disconnecting by going up into our heads. So we're stuck up here in our heads, but down here in our body, it's generating more and more of the emotion. And it, it widens that gulf between our intellect and the emotions. It's building that charge. It's building that emotional force. And the more that we continue to do so, it's like the pattern itself is becoming more deeply entrenched. It's an incredibly self-destructive thing to do. And it causes us more and more suffering. By doing that, we inadvertently are reinforcing the dysfunctional patterns that so many of us remain stuck in, in terms of the way our relationships play out. And that perpetuates our suffering indefinitely. I'm not saying to never talk about the, the issues concerning you. Sometimes we do need to open up and express what's going on. We need to confide in someone who's understanding, for instance, a, a psychotherapist or a trusted friend. But there comes a point at which we've said as much as we can say, a point at which it's no longer productive to just keep talking about it. And if we do so, then what happens is we end up just digging ourselves into an ever deeper hole. You see, continually talking about the person who's dragging our heart around, the crazy making relational dramas, it's not going to make that person love you. It's not going to fix the relationship or heal the hurt. As I said before, we need to interrupt the pattern. We need to interrupt that incessant chatter by asking ourselves, what are the deepest feelings behind all that? And once you access those feelings to the best of your ability, bring your full awareness to what you're feeling in your body, immerse your awareness in the depths of these feelings and sensations and breathe very softly, deeply, follow the feelings and sensations. You're not trying to change them. You're not trying to make the feelings go away. You're not trying to breathe them out. And please don't expect them to change in just a few minutes and like you're instantly going to be over and it's going to transform you just again like waving the magic wand all in an instant this is an ongoing process it can take quite a lot of time and commitment dedicated practice to facilitate the much needed healing and transformation that needs to occur but the more you work with this practice and what i found and so many, many people I've worked with is that it enables you to dissolve those unhealthy attachments and let go of that person or the relationship that's not working and finally move on. We also need to factor in the neurobiological component of our heartache. For instance, when we experience a breakup or we're ghosted or someone stringing us along, it initiates a very powerful biochemical process within our brains involving the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is associated with the body's stress response. 
and its level decreases precipitously during times of significant emotional distress. The dramatic reduction in norepinephrine levels contributes to feelings of sadness and depression, obsessive thinking. That's why your mind keeps going around and around and you keep talking about that person. It's that, that need to continually talk about or love sip drama with anyone we can get to listen in hopes that it will either bring our love back or somehow alleviate our suffering. Also, we need to take into consideration the decrease in dopamine, another neurotransmitter that's part of the brain's reward system, which significantly impacts our sense of pleasure and well-being. So there's a reason that people say that love is the drug. When we're in love, we're in a state of absolute bliss. We're experiencing this magical sense of connectedness. It's the best feeling in the world. However, when our love crashes and burns, it can be similar to an opioid user being derived of their fix and going through withdrawal. In these times, we find ourselves consumed by profound feelings of emptiness, our entire body is aching, and emotionally, we feel as though we've been mortally wounded. So adding to this complex biochemical response is oxytocin, often referred to as the love or cuddle hormone. Oxytocin is released whenever we're physically intimate with someone, when we're cuddling, even just being touched by them. And yet when a relationship ends, there's a sudden halt in the production of oxytocin. And that can leave us feeling disconnected and emotionally adrift. And it intensifies our feelings of loneliness. The absence of oxytocin just further compounds our emotional and physical symptoms of heartbreak or suffering. And it just makes it harder for us to cope with the end of a relationship. The devastation of a painful breakup and other heart-rending dramas, it also increases our levels of the stress hormone cortisol. High levels of cortisol impact various aspects of brain functioning, including memory and mood, which further exacerbates our feelings of distress and obsessive thinking. And this hormonal surge compounds our emotional turmoil, making it even more challenging to move on and find peace. When we're going through this heart-rending drama, experiencing our deepest emotional wounding, it's so critically important for us to be making use of the most effective therapeutic interventions. A lot of people have no idea that these interventions are even available in the ways that they can help you to facilitate the healing of your body and mind and to cycle through the grief and the devastation and get to a place where you're much stronger and more resilient. The obsessive thinking that occurs when we're in the midst of a devastating breakup or some other crazy making relational torment, it's actually part of our brain's attempt to make sense of the painful emotions we're experiencing and to get our lost love back or to find some other solution to alleviate our suffering. The problem is that so many of us fall into the seemingly endless cycle of rumination where we're continually replaying the distressing events in our mind and analyzing every word and every action of our former partner or the person we're wanting to be with. And this endless mental repetition only deepens our emotional distress and it prevents us, as I said before, from letting go and moving on. Having gone through the process I'm describing repeatedly, I'm all too familiar with its damaging consequences. And that's, again, why I say it's critically important for us to seek out intervention in these instances to facilitate the healing that we cannot fully do on our own. Psychotherapy for some can play an especially important role in our healing process, helping us to better understand our emotional wounding and the dysfunctional dynamics that we're enacting in our relationships. Psychotherapy can be a great benefit by providing the much needed cognitive understanding that so many of us are lacking. Therapeutic modalities such as acupuncture, deep tissue massage, and Ayurvedic medicine can help us to not only become more embodied, but it also helps to restore a harmonious balance in the brain's biochemistry, therefore helping to alleviate 
the distress that we're experiencing. For me, having trained with a traditional Native American doctor, a medicine man from the Kiowa tribe, a big part of my training is going on the vision quest. It's a native practice that involves going out to fast alone in the mountains for four days and nights with no food or water. During my time on the mountain, there are so many instances where I'll feel this extraordinarily powerful presence descending into my body. And I could feel this presence at times. It's somewhat even hallucinatory. I'd be reliving these experiences, sometimes going far into my distant past, even as far back as childhood, many of which I'd completely forgotten about or maybe had some vague recollection of. Other times it would be more recent experiences, such as the, the relational drama I was going through around that time in my life. But I could feel this presence working with me and those lived experiences would be coming back up in all the intense, highly charged emotions that were attached to it. And I could feel this presence helping me, working with me to digest those traumas, the other aspects of my lived experience. And as that was happening, I could also feel these deeply wounded parts of myself being transformed, building this whole new foundation from which I can relate and establish more meaningful and more deeply fulfilling connection. The vision quest has by far been the most powerful aspect of my healing process. Although for most people, the vision quest would be too intense. Some of you could possibly do it, but it takes a lot of training to build up to that. Now, like the traditional Native American doctors over the centuries, I too work as a conduit. And what does that mean? That means I allow an extraordinarily powerful presence to work through me to facilitate healing within the bodies and minds of those I work with. And the fact that I've healed my own relational wounds makes me better equipped to serve other individuals who are in the midst of a devastating breakup or divorce or strung out on someone or dealing with patterns of abandonment, rejection, and unrequited love who have been ghosted. Those who have the opportunity to work with me experience much of the same kind of healing that I go through when I'm on the vision quest, only it's a whole lot easier. During the individual healing sessions, this presence working through me works with these parts of you that are carrying all this emotional wounding, these deeply traumatized parts of you go through this process through which they're healed and transformed. As that happens, you become stronger, you develop this greater resilience, you become lighter, you freer. And this presence working through me also helps with the biochemical processes taking place within the brain to establish a new balance, restoring a sense of calm and well-being. As we work together, the suffering of the heartache that you've gone through is transformed in such a way that it opens your heart, increasing your capacity to love and to be loved. Do reach out to me if I could be of assistance. There's a contact form on my website, or you could also just dial my Google voice number and leave a message for me. And that number is 332-333-5155. I can work either remotely or in person, either one. And be sure to click like, like the video below and share the video with anyone that you feel will benefit and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. And one other thing, as I said, if you are watching on YouTube, look below the video itself, click on the link to the article, read the more detailed article for anything that I may have forgotten to include here.